Baby Freeze, don't shake the bed so the phones don't fall because you are restless. And can I have some quiet? Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. This series is my meat series. Look at someone beside you and tell them meat series. Hello, Simply Vic, my brother. How are you doing? How are you all doing? I want to start with a prayer because this is a scripture teaching. And trust me, you'd be glad you are here today. Heavenly Father, I ask for the mercies of your grace to be bundled upon our lives so we can have understanding. We can possess true knowledge and walk in your grace. In Yahushua's name I pray. Amen. All right. Um, I want to start by studying 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm starting from verse 2. I had to feed you with milk, not solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger and you still aren't ready, for you are still controlled by your sinful human nature. You are jealous of one another. Doesn't that prove you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world when one says, I'm a follower of Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos? Aren't you just acting like people of the world? You see, today I want us to discuss something quite deep. The allegorical and anagogical meanings of scripture you see we've been dumbed down for so long that many of us believe that a scripture session or a session in church is a means to make money or a means for worldly problems to be solved back here big shout out to jigger collins Awesome, awesome, awesome. See you there on um, YouTube. Today, I want us to, dis to go to grab some meat. Let's bite it. Let's chew it. We might not be able to swallow it. And maybe even if we swallow it, we might not be able to digest it. And if we digest it, we might not be able to assimilate it. So, so it might not have any use to it. But nonetheless, let's try to bite the meat. We're tired of the milk. The milk, milky doctrines, the milky gospel, praying for a husband and yet all the marriages in the country are literally failing. Praying for wealth and we're the poverty capital of the world. We are, our country is not safer than atheist or, or irreligious countries. We're not wealthier. We don't have longer lives. We don't, our children don't have better lives. Today, I was reading the story of a ritualist who passed on while waiting for the parts they needed for the A22. It's a mess. But you see, I want us to depart from that mess. And I want us to chew some depth slowly. But let's chew it. Enough of what God cannot do does not exist. Those are the nonsense doctrines that people with deficient cognitive abilities put themselves under. What God do, cannot do does not exist and Nigeria is the way it is. Oh yes, I will never doubt the power of God, but neither will I ever subject God to my feeble human understanding by making overall claims. Do you know that? Does God know everything? 
God knows everything. Does God know everything? He's all-knowing. He's all-knowing. So if somebody is all-knowing, do you know that automatically by default, that means he cannot learn anything new? He knows everything. Everything that there is, there was, and there will ever be. So that means you can't teach him anything new. So when you say what God cannot do does not exist, that means God can learn. That means you are taking away the omni knowest. God cannot lie, God cannot die, and he's not going to learn these things because you want to, you and your church want to sell a, an Instagram show where they used to make money. So we need to depart from that brainlessness. That is where Nigeria is. We need to move away from that. We need to move towards wisdom and knowledge. We need to feed our minds with things that are important. So today, I want us to talk about the allegorical and anagogical meanings of scripture. There are four meanings uh, of scripture, four different types of scriptural translation. And I'm going to use the Latin phrase, Litera gesta docet, quid cedras allegoria, moralis quid ogas quotendas anagogia. Roughly, we can translate this rhyme as the literal teaches what God and our ancestors did. The allegory is where our faith and belief is hid. The moral gives us the rule of daily life. The anagogy shows us where we end our strife. That's rough, but I need to break these down so you can understand. Let's start with the allegory. There are four main types of translation. We have allegory, we have literal, we have allegory, we have moral, and we have anagogy. Let's start with the allegory. An allegory is a story in which the characters or events are symbols representing other events, ideas, or people. Allegory has been used... Bring that bottle here and don't play with it. Allegory has been used indirectly to express unpopular or controversial ideas. Animal Farm was not about animals. It was about the government. The animals played an allegorical part in George Orwell's Animal Farm. Other times, allegory is used to express, ab to express abstract ideas or metaphors, making the truth easier to understand. Now... Let's talk about the literal interpretation. Literal interpretation is very easy. I don't need to define it to you. It's literal. Amarachi slapped baby freeze. Amarachi raised hand, stretch hand, slap baby freeze, baby freeze collect slap. Literal. Right? And that will literally happen now because you are hopping around. You go collect now. So... The literal interpretation of scripture is what it really is. Christ was hungry at and thirsty at the well in Samaria in John chapter 4. Literal translation. Person where they find slap, collect slap. It's a simple translation. Now... If we now use the allegorical, another word for allegorical is typological interpretation. To connect the Old Testament with the New Testament, drawing allegorical connections between the events of Christ's life and stories of the Old Testament. The Bible contains quite a few. We'll talk about the parables. Um... For instance, now, let us also talk about 
the tropological or the moral interpretation. That is also straightforward. It's pretty easy. Thou shall not, give me one, kill. And then in the book of Deuteronomy, you have the penalties laid out for anybody who goes against the thou shall nots. Right? That is the moral of the story. Don't go into a dark room with a boy, my teenage daughters. What's the moral of the story? You shouldn't be alone in a dark place with a boy. So you don't go and so they don't go and yell you and you become Judy. Amen. So the easy ones are the tropological and the literal interpretation of scripture. It's easier. The moral, don't kill, love. But you see, when it comes to the anagogical, the anagogical interpretation deals with future events. The eschatology, heaven, purgatory, the last judgment, the resurrection, the second advent, prophecies. My problem is, although the Bible and the scriptures in general are old books, every interpretation is flawed. The literal, the moral, the anagogical, and the allegorical. They're all flawed. However, the most flawed are the one that requires you to interpret something of poetic nature using your own poetic license. It's getting scary now. That is why we have two schools of belief. The end times. We have the pre-tribulation rapture and the post-tribulation rapture both drawn out of biblical constructs. What is the pre-tribulation rapture? Louder, louder, louder. Let me hear you. You, post-tribulation rapture. Define it for me. The oh, things mean? that happened before rapture. No, that is after. Pre is. No, you said pre. Pre and your is post. Yeah, pre is before yes. tribulation. The rapture is before tribulation. Pre-tribulation tribulation rapture. rapture. That is tribulation. Pre-tribulation rapture is rapture before tribulation. No, okay. Pre-tribulation rapture. Pre-tribulation. The rapture is pre-tribulation. Oh. Before the tribulation. Yes. Then post-tribulation rapture. After. after the tribulation, there's the rapture. And both, if you sit down with scholars, you will find that they all have enough evidence to back both constructs. Now, allegorical constructs gone wrong the most glaring example is isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 being used for satan because the verse says oh how you have fallen from heaven O lucifer and we allegorically substitute that that actually contains both an anagogy and an allegory because it has a spiritual translation. And the problem is the people who gave you this spiritual translation do not have the intellectual capacity to sweep your floor or the understanding required to sweep, to wash your car. But you entrust them with your spiritism. So all of a sudden, Satan becomes Lucifer because one line in scripture was given an allegorical and anagogical translation. And up till now, people still battle with me despite glaring evidence. I've said this. Give me that bottle. I don't want to see your hand on it. Give it to me. Hmm. 
So, how did we move from a truth? Do you realize that the Bible was translated to English from Latin? I've said this so many times. And the word Lucifer was used four times in the Latin Bible. Twice in Job, once in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12, and once in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. The two times the word Lucifer was used in the book of Job, it was talking about the power of God and forgiveness and prayer. And the time it was used in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19, if you read it in the Biblia Sacra Vulgata or the Latin Bible, you will see it was talking about Christ. The word Lucifer was used to speak of Christ. But because only that one instance erroneously found its way from the Latin Bible into the English Bible, all of a sudden it started getting uh, allegorical and anagogical meanings. I have seen the dumbest level in Christianity where a future event is used to tell the story of a past event. I'll give you this example. Go with me to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. If you're there with me, let me know. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. The war broke out in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the dragon lost the battle and he as his angels were forced out of heaven. The great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. This happens at the end times. There is no biblical record of a devil falling from heaven from Genesis to Revelation. It does not exist. But you see, those were the lies that you were taught as doctrine. They taught you that Satan fell from heaven because he became proud and blah, blah. And then they use Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel and the book of um, Isaiah. They take one line here, one line there and use it to buttress this. And at the end of the day, you have twisted doctrines. You have twisted doctrines. How do you use what is supposed to happen in the end times? You see, if you read in the Greek Bible, if you read Revelation chapter 12, it starts with the word ke, the Greek word ke. Ke means and. So whatever happened in Revelation chapter 11, Revelation chapter 12 is a chronological um, continuation of Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, if you look at Revelation chapter 11, it also starts with the Greek word ke, meaning and. So, we have gotten to a point where the truth looks like heresy to us. If I told anyone there that Christ was Lucifer, you will fight with me. How many of you can wear a t-shirt with the words, Christ is Lucifer? How many of you get mind to wear them? That is the truth. Clear truth. But how many people can? But if I tell you to wear a shirt with Jesus Christ, you will easily wear it. Meanwhile, the word Jesus Christ, the word Jesus only existed 400 years ago. If you went back in time 500 years, ain't nobody in the whole world who know who Jesus was. Because the word Jesus had not yet been created. English language did not have J. Hebrew did not have J. 
Aramaic did not have J. So, what am I trying to do with all of this? The meat series is a wake-up series for us Christians. How do we stop eating these mundane, benighted, unlettered, unscholarly, unrealistic doctrines? How do you believe a pastor who left Osinachi in hospital and went to Cameroon to raise the dead and heal the sick? Does that make sense to you? We should by now have evolved mentally. We should have moved away from where... Listen, the world was where we are today 500 years ago. Where witches are flying and colliding with, 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 with uh, Nepal poles and finding themselves on houses. You see, my problem is, I will not say that phenomenon does not exist because in the world there are many unexplained phenomena. But my problem is the eyewitnesses you see, you see, in Islam, and I'm going to use this as a preaching. In Islam, how do they know that the fasting is about to begin, or the fasting is over, or it's time for Ilaya? How do they know? The moon! God bless you, you have a brain in your head. The moon. What do they do is they come out and look at the sky if they see the moon. Now, the problem is, in many parts of the year, like right now, if you walk to your window, you will not see the moon if you're in Lagos. The weather is bad. Big shout out to Allah of Lagos who entered the airplane and the airplane started shaking. The, the guy came to tweet on his page that he had a, he experienced a, a plane crash. That weather no good, though. I no good lie. My simulator has real life weather. So I was coming from DNA as Abuja towards DNMM. <laughs> Waiting my eyes, see, I had to come and write a post congratulating Nigerian pastors. Say, Una, they walk. Sorry, Nigerian pilots. So here's the thing, yeah. According to Islam, anyone can spot the moon as long as that person is not insane. So imagine I'm at the farm and a cloud blows by and I'm able to see the moon. If I can go and meet the chief imam and say, Allahu Akbar, I've seen the moon, they declare fasting begins or they declare fasting ends immediately. The whole town doesn't, you know, there are days that the moon will come and everybody will be looking at the moon and the moon will be doing it oh, to all of you. Hey, it's me here, me, the moon. You understand? But inside conch dry season, when there is haze, you might not see the moon. Or inside a rainstorm, like what we had earlier on today, when a lot of Lagos almost jumped out of the aeroplane. <laughs> you can't see the moon. But guess what? Somebody might be on Todd Milan Bridge or somewhere, and he can see the moon. But the chief imam is looking out for the moon. The chief imam cannot see the moon. So as the, 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 the requirement is, as long as that person is not a mad person, and they say, say before God that you actually saw the moon. And the person said, I swear before God. I don't know if they have to swear. I said this before God. I saw the moon. Immediately they declared the fast. My problem with Nigerian Christians is most of you, Tiawere, not just Nigerian Christians, Nigerians in general, you did not see the moon. What you saw was an apparition built out of your feeble imagination. You see a woman on a roof. And the first thing that comes to your mind is she must have been a witch. And she was returning home and fell. You would see 
a young boy, the recent one was a young boy. They say he was returned. They don't give the guy better mending. They come, they ask the boy, where are you coming from? And say they come from meeting. Have you heard of schizophrenia? Just go and read about people who have schizophrenia. They will tell you all sorts of stories. They will tell you that they are that uh, Donald Trump is their younger brother. They will tell you all sorts of things. And because their minds are delirious, they are deluded. They are suffering from what you call paranoid delusions. Whatever you tell them, they will say yes. And they will build a story around it. So if you tell them that, so you are a witch, Abby, they'll say, yes, you didn't know before. So you, in your mind, you think you are cross-examining. Meanwhile, you are badgering the witness. Listen, in court, I have a client. I'm a lawyer. I have a client. My other, the, um, the other, how do you call it? The cross, the one who is cross-examining it, the, my client. The defense. There are questions that they will ask my client that I'll say, objection. He's leading the witness. And the judge will say, sustained. My problem is, they will lead the witness. Now them be, now them be judge. Now them be jury. Now them they question the witness. They go lead the witness. To, you see, when you are leading the witness, what do you expect the witness to say? So you have 500 people giving you an eyewitness account of a moon they did not see. And these delusions and paranoia are bred out of false religious and superstitious beliefs. mass hallucinations and all these things i don't want to raise my children in such a place where my children will see cockroach flying and automatically they'll begin to speak in tongues mad cockroach get the broom and if you no, nobody fear cockroach reach me the other day i see cockroach inside my room now marachi i call yeah marachi they have come oh. <laughs> of course not in a spiritual sense but i fear cockroaches that's the day I realized I'm actually no fear cockroach. Yella. Yella go down the gate. Baby freeze. Baby freeze don't go enter the house again. <laughs> Bibs, you be fear cockroach. <laughs> Even the brave one, Bibs. They see cockroach, they take off. Only for me to sit down like the cockroach did my ceiling, my room where we know they get. We never have cockroaches in this room. We have cockroaches in this room maybe twice a year. Oh my, I don't see big cockroach. They walk out for my own oh, nah, call him. Uh, taste buds like, why are you waking Amarachi? I say, why am I waking Amarachi? <laughs> we don't go sleep inside you. Until this cockroach die, me and you now saw so our eye go open. You better make a call Amarachi, you quickly kill her. <laughs> Carry broom, me and face cockroach. I, I rather face thief or snake. I don't fear snake, oh. I don't fear scorpion. Just that cockroach, not bring her near me. But that roach, he gets some people that don't enter prayer mode. Just like your flight, your phone gets flight mode. Now, so some people's brain get prayer mode. They'll just press it. Instead of aeroplane sign, they'll just see hand sign like this. They'll just press it. Pim. Oh, Father, my enemies that are disturbing me, let the Holy Ghost fire consume them. Share Yahweh. If now so Holy Ghost fire, they consume enemy. We're not supposed to get one single Boko Haram. Meanwhile, every day Boko Haram, they get stronger. Kidnap a day. Kidna so the government, no, no, waiting to do. Government say it is now illegal to give kidnapper money. So if you want to pay ransom now, it's illegal. Share on a day here. That is where we are. It's not working, but we still believe. That's not faith. That's stupidity. Amen. You're driving. Imagine you're driving in a car and a child is crossing in front of you. 
And then you start to pray, Father Lord, stop this car. When you have a brake pedal. One knee, match brake. Press your brake. Not be everything, be prayer. But as long as we are not ready to eat meat, that seven o'clock prayer, they, they always fool there. They say fire prayer, fire ta. They're going to speak raska borogoro, horos karabala. But they know that's what it listen. As long as there is a market for it, they will all continue to offer the service. The day you people wake up, let me tell you something. Eh? I entered a business deal with somebody only for me to realize that that they go to that seven o'clock prayer. I, by the time I found out it was too late, I don't put my money inside. One year ago till now, I've never seen my money. Now, so I did hear they look them. The last time I spoke to the person on the phone, the person said, don't you believe God can sort out your finances? Now, so I did look them. God will leave the whole work where they do. Oh, 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 I, I believe there's, there's, there's a spiritual place for money, but that God will leave everything he's going to do and come and collect my money from you people that stole it. Under the guise of religion. Listen, we are supposed to have serious meeting. They start with speaking in tongues. This is how I'm looking at it. But by then it was late. My money has entered. That is where we are as a people. Our brains are in chains. Look at someone beside you and tell them, get your brains out of chains. Get your brains out of chains. Start studying for yourself. You need to develop a scripture study pattern so you will not be defrauded with allegorical and anagogical translations that do not exist except in the minds of the feeble-minded and cognitively impaired. Get your brains out of chains. Unchain your brain is enough chain your body chain your arms somebody said you need jesus no i don't need jesus jesus is a yahoo boy brought to us by the oimbo people the jesus narrative is an allegorical and anagogical translation of yahushua the real savior they brought a white boy with blonde hair saying he died for me and my ancestors. You don't ever see where Oimbo died for Nigerian man before. If not so easy, why did not they give us visa? Say Oimbo man. Go need they go need Oimbo man for cross for you. Shen she wirisha. People will come your country, carry you as slaves inside a boat called Jesus. The boat that the first slave boat. To carry slaves from Africa was called Jesus of Lubeck. Do not believe me. Go and Google it. Go and Google it. They came, put our grandfathers and fathers inside the hall, tied us, and they were holding prayer meeting upstairs. I don't know who Jesus is. I know Yahushua Hamashiach. Why? Because I'm cutting away the English. I'm cutting away the Latin. I'm cutting as much of the Greek as possible to get to the Aramaic Savior who, listen, do you know why I like Yahushua? Yahushua is not black, he's not white. He's middle, in between, cut across. He's black enough to be black and white enough to be white. But you see, by the time they add the Roman narrative, before you know it, you have a white boy with blue eyes and blonde hair as your savior. One of my family members sent me this. <laughs> it's for Easter. Abi, what did we just finish now? Is it not Easter? Okay, no, for me. Let me just show you. You sent me this dude. I said, no, 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 that's not Christ. That's a Yahoo boy. A Yahoo, Yahoo, the biggest Yahoo in the world. As they see this guy, they, they use and collect 10% of people's salary monthly. 
even inside pandemic where people they collect with me that thing where does they collect for pandemic relief vaccine. materials eh? vaccine not vaccine that they were giving people palliatives this yahoo boy where other people they collect palliatives this yahoo boy still they collect 10 percent of your money In Nigeria, our palliative no cuckoo pass in Domi. <laughs> the person that did us <laughs> has, has passed on to the great beyond since. And when he did us, he threw what he used to do us inside the river. The river has carried it away. So when you tell me I need Jesus, the first thing I tell you is Jesus is among the things you don't need. You need to start finding who the true Savior was. He was not Jesus. He does not sound like Jesus. He does not use people's head like Jesus does. Because his name is Yahushua and he gave up himself for the betterment of humanity. So find the Savior. That's my message and the message is over. I'm going to join you at 11 o'clock. We're going to have a nice time. But this is the meat series and the meat series is going to continue for the, for the better part of this week into our Sunday morning sermon. Let us talk about meat and not milk. How do we purge ourselves from all these erroneous translations? We're focusing on the spiritual interpretation of scripture. The anagogical interpretation, ignoring the literal and the moral. Funny enough, we five to ten churches on every street, we are less moral than nations that don't have God. Obviously, we just think we have God. God in Nigeria is an allegory. Because Nigerians do not know who God is. And I'm going to prove this with one scripture as we officially end. First John chapter 4 verse 8. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. 1 John 4, 8. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Using this verse, I want to ask you, do Nigerians know God? You, do Nigerians know God? Do Nigerians know God? Do Nigerians know God? My TikTok family. Do Nigerians know God? My, tic, my beautiful TikTok family. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Do Nigerians know God? Do Nigerians know God? The answer is no. Because who does not love does not know God. God is not by praying. God is not by fasting. You don't know God by fasting. You don't know God by going to church five times a week. You know God by love. Those who cannot love do not know God. Take care. God bless you. See you at 11 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be talking about... Uh, we're going to be... By oh, light has gone. We're going to be talking about... Can this one contain himself? We're going to be talking about our secular topic, our usual topics, um, and uh, we had such a wonderful time uh, yesterday. It's called Second Wife or Side Chick, the pros and the cons. Uh, this is a modern world construct, even though second wives and concubines were biblical um, were, were, were common in biblical times, we want to talk about them in the Nigerian... No, 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 no. Who said up Nepal? Please, 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 this is not up Nepal. This is up my estate. My estate supplies 
24 hours electricity. It's not NEPA. We pay over 150,000 naira a month to get this electricity you are seeing. So please, NEPA should keep quiet. This is up my estates. NEPA took delight. My estate brought it back. So see you guys at 11 o'clock. It's going to be fun. I'm going to have Wowza back and possibly the other lady who is a second wife or a co-wife in a polygamous home. And we'll be having some oh, some heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Please make sure you join us. Titi Lala Brown Sugar. I know who this person is. I'm going to bring her up for a minute. In fact, I'll even invite her to join us uh, at 11 o'clock. Um, she's someone very special's mom. I'm, I'm sure you guys are going to know who it is if she agrees to come on live, even if it's for a minute. Let me see. I've sent her an invite. Up my estates. Titi Lala, I'm bringing you up. You have to join us in the evening. I'm sure you'll be able to contribute quite a lot to our conversation. So, guys, take care of yourselves. Let's, let's keep this honest. Um, take care, my love. Thank you guys for coming. Like I said earlier on, let's grab at the meat. Bye, guys. Someone said we need to ask questions because it's a complicated topic. That's why I said we're doing it for the rest of the week. It's not just today. Today is the beginning. Take care and God bless you.